I'd like to thank God for our coordinator here in Europe, Manuel, and I saw the PSF coordinator worldwide, Lick is somewhere around there. Let us just celebrate all our leaders in Europe and all over. The Lord bless you all in Jesus' name. And let's just celebrate the choir, awesome choir, awesome choir. I know um, that young man, is it Bukola? I mean, when he was just talking, I was so proud that we have such, such, such products in the RCCG. Praise the Lord. And tell your neighbor the best is yet to come. Turn to another person and say, neighbor, the best is yet to come. You know, by the grace of God, I believe that in RCCG we have trailblazers. High flyers, yes. goal getters, yes. line crossers. Yes. We have those that are pace setters. Yes. We have people that are unstoppable. Yes. And you see, when I shout unstoppable, you shout generation. Wow. Unstoppable! Generation! generation. Unstoppable! Generation. generation! Tell your neighbor we are unstoppable. Say, neighbor, we are unstoppable. No matter how great you are, you are going greater in the name of Jesus. And that's why we are taking wings. We are going higher. And let's all shout, I am going higher. Oh, you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. Like you, for you are great. You do miracles so great. There is none. There is no one else like you. There is none like you. There is no one else. Jesus. Dad, even as we share for the next few minutes, just be magnified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And let's all shout the mega amen. And by the way, the panelists, that was a great one. Let's celebrate the panelists. You know, um, you may kindly be seated. When they're talking about COVID, my oh my. COVID was a time when there was a lock-in, but there was a lock-in for a lifting up. I mean, there was a lockdown for a what? And that's what I believed. Um, I'm involved in education. And um, during COVID, schools were closed. Campuses were closed. And the business I'm involved in, amongst others, is an educational business. And um, there's one scripture that came to my heart that I discovered during COVID. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2, I think it is. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2 and the NIV version, and that's not what I'm here to talk about, but that touched my heart during the talk. The NIV version of Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2 says this. Invest in seven ventures. Yes, in eight. Now, could you get the NIV? Do you have the NIV? Tick tock, tick tock. Okay, they'll get there. Invest in seven ventures. Yes, in eight. You do not know what disaster may come upon the land. And I realized that those that had 
limited their vision and invested in just one or two ventures. When things came crashing, they were just stagnant. Things were just down for them. But it was the time for us to, as someone had said there during the panel's discussion, to look inward and open our eyes to different levels of investment. And for me, that was an eye-opener. And I just resolved, I resolved, I said, Lord, I mean, I've been doing one particular business for 20, 23, 24, 25 years. I'm going to just enlarge my coast. And I know a lot of people that made good money during that time. A lot of people, I mean, went to the internet and um, some people learned some courses and started um, teaching others what they had learned and got some good money that way. Why? They were people of vision. Today I'm talking about very briefly about making a global impact and I believe so strongly that wherever our youth are, wherever anyone is, and any of our youth, you are to make a global impact. If you agree with me, shout a loud amen. amen. You can't be in a church, in a, in a mission that the Lord is taking globally and be local. It is an error. It's a misnomer. It ought not to be and it will not be. You see, as the plane goes high and you're in that plane, you go as high as the plane is going. So as the Lord continues to lift RCCG by his grace and mercy, I believe someone here shall be going higher in life. And let that person just shout, I am going higher. Oh, I didn't say you should murmur. I said someone should shout, I am going higher. I see the word of God tells us in Matthew 5, 13 to 16. Matthew 5, 13 to 16 says, You are the salt of the earth, and if the salt has lost its savor, where which shall it be salted is henceforth good for nothing. But to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of man, you are the light of the world. You are not the light of just your country. You are not the light of the Netherlands. You are not the light of Europe. You are not the light of just Africa. You are not the light of just America. You are the light of... That's global impact. You are the light of the world and it says, let your, um, uh, your light of the world, a city that is set on a hill, cannot be hidden. By his grace and mercy, I declare by his grace and mercy, somebody here, some person that shall shout a loud amen, you shall experience global relevance in the name of Jesus. I said you will experience global relevance in the name of Jesus. Um, you can't be hid, neither do men light a candle and put on their bushel, but on the candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. That's awesome. So you're not just making an impact for yourself. You're making an impact unto others. And I love verse 16, which obviously is my favorite verse here. Let your light so shine before men. And I love that. Let your light so shine before men. That they may see. Check that out. Your light is shining. And by reason of your light, others begin to have a vision. By reason of God's glory upon your life. Others that were confused that didn't know what to do with their own life. By reason of you. By reason of somebody here. Others begin to have a vision. Let your light so shine that people may see your good works and begin to glorify God. And now it's my prayer that by reason of God's light upon our lives. We shall begin to make impact wherever we are in the name of Jesus. Beloved, we are talking again of global impact. And I've asked myself, um, what does it take? Oh, okay. What does it take to make global impact? Which kind of person should you be as the panelists we are talking I? I, 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 I was really interested in some, what, what some of them were doing. Because one of the first things for one to make global impact, um, I'm sure that cordless microphone will come up. You must be a person of vision. And that was repeated severally. People of vision see the impossible and they believe it is possible. They see the invisible and they believe it is possible. It is said that vision is the most powerful force that's on earth. 
Whatever we see right now in RCCG, by his grace and mercy, is by reason of a covenant and people linked up to that vision. I have the privilege of being a member of the Central Missions Board and when we sit every month and we hear what, what's happening all over the world, I sit and say, wow, well, Lord, thank you for how far you've led us. But that's because we had people of vision. People that realize that the church needs to go forth and make a statement, make sure that souls are saved. And in the same way, your business, your individual lives, beloved brethren, we need to make sure that we are people of vision because your vision determines your destiny. Your vision determines your that people are stumbling in life because they lack vision. People get depressed, disillusioned. People get limited. Why? They lack vision. They look at, um, they, they allow the, what others say. They allow the conviction of others, the confession of others, the countenance of others to discourage them. And somehow they allow themselves to be blind. Just nudge your neighbor and say, neighbor, what's that vision God has given to you? You see, vision has an attractive force. And so if that is the vision here, the vision will attract me and I find myself being persistent, moving towards that vision because vision has a magnetic pull. That is vision. As we had heard someone once say, I mean, Dad said it yesterday. God gives you such a vision that's so big you need to or was it yesterday? You need to connect with him. You need to, if your vision is not so big that you believe you can do it on your own, then that's not a G God given vision. A God given vision is so large that you know you need to connect with the giver of the vision. And so, if I, I've often I've asked quite a lot of young people, what do you want to do in life? They say, well, I want to be great. And that's no vision. I want to be a mind, I want to be a philanthropist. That's no vision. I want to make an impact in life. That's no vision. It has to be something that's specific. How do you go and make an impact? Beloved brother, we've got to be people of vision. It's the key to the future. And the word of God tells us in Proverbs 29, 18, Proverbs 29, 18, where there's no vision. The people will do what? Perish. And so when people wake up each morning and they're just moving around and say, how are you doing? We say, well, I'm just managing. I see them as people that lack vision. But I say, well, how, how are things going? I say, well, things are just happening. How can things just be happening and you're there? You should be out there making things happen. As a beloved young people, I want to urge us for us to make a global impact. In the first instance, we must be people of vision. In Habakkuk chapter 2, the Bible shows how Habakkuk goes up to the tower, and I love that. He goes up to the tower. He doesn't stay on the ground level. He goes up to a tower, and he's separated from others, and he connects with the Lord and says, Lord, you've just got to speak to me. You've got to speak to me. And the Lord speaks and says, hey, hey, son, write the vision make it plain so that those that see it will do what so vision is not for use for others it's not all about i me and myself vision is about impacting others and so when i listen to some of the panelists and they're talking about how they're impacting others in definite terms i said that's vision beloved you know, global impact requires that you be a person of vision and that is connected with God's glory. Arise, shine, for the light is come, Isaiah 60. And the glory of God is risen upon you. When God's glory upon, comes upon you, the Bible says others may be in darkness, but for you, the light is there. And people will begin to connect with that glory. They begin to have a vision, and they begin to move towards it. My prayer is by reason of your being a person of vision, multitudes shall be impacted in the name of Jesus. 
beyond the boundaries of, 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 of your nation. People will be impacted to the glory of God in the name of Jesus. And let's all just shout vision. Shout again, vision. Now, so much has been said about that, so let me not say much more. Um, secondly, global impact, you have to be a person of value. A person of value, a person of worth. And I often ask, in your organization, in your family, in the church, wherever you stand, what's your worth, what's your value? If someone can be away, let me use church for instance. If someone could be away from church for two weeks or three weeks and they're away and they eventually come back and they say, Oh, I'm back. And someone say, Oh, did you travel? Oh, you're back. Oh, you traveled. Oh, I didn't know you traveled. That means you have no value to that system. You're not one of those persons that have made an impact. If you can be in a church assembly and you travel and you come back and your absence has not been noted, then what value are you? So wherever we are, whether you're in your family, your place of work, wherever you are, beloved brethren, we must be people of value. Genesis 1.26 makes it clear that we are created in his image. You can't be created in the image of God, having the DNA of the Most High God, and your impact cannot be felt. That's an error. You can't. When the disciples went forth, people realized, wow, these guys are here. Their presence made a, uh, an impact. But wherever you are, you must be people of value. And I want someone to just shout value. You see, people of value, they understand their position, their heritage of the Lord. They understand their prize, by, they have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. They understand their purpose to be a praise to this generation. So they, they, they understand their position, they are children of God. They understand their prize, they've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. They understand their purpose, that wherever they are, they must be a praise to God. And I ask, is there anyone like that in the house today? Is there a youth like that in the house today? If you're a youth like that, shout aloud, hallelujah. hallelujah. Beloved brethren, wherever we are, we must be people of what? Value. People of what? Value. And I want to urge us, brethren... It's often said that there are four kinds of people in life. There are those that add to life. When you're with them, you enjoy them. They make you laugh. They, they, they sort of add to life. They, they just make life fun around you. How many of you have friends like that? They, 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 they add to life. When you see those people, you enjoy them. Secondly, there are those that subtract from life. Those that subtract from life, when you share with them your dreams, and you tell them that, look, I'm, by the grace of God, I'm going to own, um, what's, the, what's your name, please? Karen? Kelly. You say, I'm going to own an L, and I'll call it Kelly Air. Kelly Air. They say, Kelly what? You're not serious, Kelly what Air. I mean, they tease you about your dreams and visions. I know there are some people like that. Those people, they try to subtract from life. Those ones, you just tolerate them. There are those that try to divide from life. Make you believe you're a non-entity. Make you believe you can't succeed. Make you believe that there's no way you can make it. Those ones, you avoid them. They divide from life. But there are those that multiply in life. And those are multiplying life. You share with them your dreams and visions. They make you realize you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above. They make you realize that, look, no matter what happens, when you're getting discouraged, they say, hey, don't be discouraged. God can make a way where there seems to be no way. 
may have fallen. They say, look, don't you know, just man may fall seven times, but it shall surely rise again. Those ones, you value them because they are multiplying into life. So those that add to life, you enjoy them. Those that subtract from life, you tolerate them. Those that divide from life, you avoid them. Those that multiply into life, you value them. In the same way, brethren, it's either you are adding, subtracting, dividing, or multiplying into the lives of others. People of value, they multiply into the lives of others. And so when you hear them discussing, by the end of the discussion, it's something that will make you better than you were yesterday. Global impact, you've got to be people of value. Not just talking about what things, how things are happening, but making an impact and making sure things happen gloriously. People of value. And I want a person of value in the house to shout aloud, hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout aloud, hallelujah. hallelujah. So wherever you are, brethren, don't seek for success. Seek to be of what? Value. Wherever you are. Any assembly, any organization, any household, wherever you are, once you are there, seek to be of value. Those that are of value are solution providers. They're intentional in providing solutions. In the third instance, beloved, global impact must be a person of vitality. Vitality talks about strength. Let the weak say, I am strong. The word of God tells us in Ephesians 3.16, Ephesians 3.16, that the Lord strengthens us in our inner mind. There are times you may feel so discouraged, but beloved, if you want to make an impact in life, don't give up. Just realize that you can make it. I want someone to just shout, I will make it. Let your shout be louder than your neighbor. Just shout, I will make it. I know you need the Holy Spirit to strengthen you. There was a time I was speaking to dad and I asked dad, I said, dad, I'm in, in the midst of, we move from one country to the other, one country to the other, and I see dad moving up and down, and I said, dad, how do you do it? And he shared with us this story, and I'm sure some of you may have heard it, about the football. The football is there on the pitch. And we have so many people, 22 players plus all the, all the extras, and, and eventually 26, 30 people kicking the ball. At the end of the match, the people are just tired. Thank God, 90 minutes plus over, and the ball is still bouncing. I asked, what's allowing the ball to bounce? The air inside. What gives you strength? The Holy Spirit in you. When others are collapsing, those that make global impact connect with the Holy Spirit and they receive strength and power to do exploits. They that know the Lord shall be strong and do what? Exploits. I want to encourage each and every one of us, brethren. No matter how the challenges may be in life, receive strength from the Holy Spirit. Receive strength and go forward in the name of Jesus. I want someone to just shout, I am going forward. Shout loud in the air, I am going forward. Let me ask, when are you going forward? Or in the third, in the fourth instance, for you to make global impact, you must be a person of valor. Now I've quickly rush this. Gideon was hiding away from the Midianites. If you read Judges chapter 6, he was there hiding away from the Midianites. And the Bible shares with us, he looked at himself as a nobody. But the Holy Spirit, the Lord told him, hey, you are a mighty man of valor. Valor means you are brave. Valor means that you are courageous. The Lord told Joshua, be strong and of good courage. Courageous people move on in spite of their fears. Fear is a destiny paralyzer. And so for anyone to be able to make global impact and i'm talking to youth all over the world 
you must be brave determined to go forth in the midst of challenges and just lift your hands and say i am going forward hold the hands of someone beside you and say we are going forward as i conclude brethren for us to be able to be of global impact like david we should be people of victory have a victorious mindset think victory the bible tells us the lord causes us always to triumph second corinthians 2 14 second corinthians 2 14 the lord causes us always to triumph think victory talk victory and tread on the path of victory just realize that once god has given you a vision he will strengthen you to fulfill that vision so you must realize that you are people of victory if you are failing you are failing forward if you are falling you are falling forward oh yes you have learned this not the way i should do it but you are going forward in life and let's all just shout i am going forward in life i'll just share a story and i mentioned last point and i was in my late 20s and the lord said son start a school I was 28, 29. And my country, the Lord said, start a school. I said, I did engineering, civil engineering. Is there an engineer in the house today? Hi. Any civil engineer? <laughs> and the Lord said, son, start a school. And I was wondering, I was involved in a lot of youth work back at home. And uh, when the Lord said, start a school, I it was in line with the passion I had and so i met my dad and I said dad um i'd like to start a school my dad said engineer principal not principal engineer engineer principal is that you sure and i said look dad you have a building somewhere um could i kindly use that building to start a school and he looked at me and laughed you see because i'm not his first child neither am i his second i'm not his third neither am i his fourth i'm not his fifth he's a nigerian neither am i his sixth we're getting somewhere i'm his seventh child and i'm the third boy i said dad i'd like to use that building and he looked at me and ah i said okay let me just use it for evening lessons eventually he agreed and we had over 600 students in the evening lesson and he began to believe in the vision god will raise those that will believe in your vision but there must be a manifestation and eventually um said let's start the secondary school first year we are four students second year we are 24 students my father said son give me back my building my mom said and then uh, my mom said son launch into the deep i was a parish pastor i said lord what do i do what do i do and the lord said son spend more time with me spend more time on my work so i got so busy doing church work so busy doing a whole lot of church work and beginning of the third year i wasn't in church i was um i was in school i was in church and my account officer came and met me and said, we have a problem. I said, what's the problem? He said, over 250 are looking for admission in the school. I said, Lord, how did that? I said, did you advertise? No. I said, Lord, how did that happen? And Lord said, son, you're faithful in my work. Now I'm showing myself faithful in your work. Now that was this year, we are going to be 30 years in the school. And by the grace of God, the students have our ex-students have brought students to the school their children to the school and um, I look at that as I see them all over the world as I travel I realize it started with a little seed and I believe there are people here that are going to make exceptionally great impact in life but the last thing I'll mention is you must be a person of virtues virtues talk about moral excellence Daniel the Lord Daniel made it clear that he was not going to defile himself and you see what does the word tell us and I'll end with this scripture 
the word of God tells us that the righteous the righteous people they are more excellent than their neighbors and God's promises are out there for people who maintain their virtues in life in second Peter chapter 1 verse 4 to 6 second Peter chapter 1 verse 4 to 6 the Bible tells us that his promises are there when we are partakers of his divine nature God's promise for your life comes into manifestation when you manifest his nature when you link up to him he lifts you up I repeat when you link up to him he lifts you up when you manifest his nature his plan for your life comes into manifestation my prayer for youth and young adults all over the world is as they manifest the nature of God with divine virtues God shall be glorified in their life and if that's your prayer just if that's your desire may you rise wherever you are and say my father my father please be glorified in my life I want to make a global impact help me oh God just pray that prayer for 15 seconds and say Lord I want to make a global impact just help me help me to make a global impact whatever will defy me whatever will defy your plans in my life let it be destroyed let it be destroyed let it be destroyed I want to make a global impact help me to connect with you for a lifting in life in Jesus name we pray I'll just take this last prayer and say my father my father whatever has truncated my destiny let it be destroyed in the name of Jesus just pray that prayer for 15 seconds whatever has truncated my destiny every yoke of sin let it be destroyed let it be destroyed let it be destroyed in the name of Jesus in Jesus name we pray with all eyes still closed all eyes still closed you may be that one person you look at your life and you realize that your lifestyle has allowed your destiny to be truncated your lifestyle has limited God's plan in your life your lifestyle somehow has caused you to deviate from God's plan and you're saying Lord I want to reconnect reconnect with you if you are that one person you are those three persons you are those five persons you're saying Lord I want to reconnect with you I, I realize there's a disconnect I want to reconnect if you are that person just lift your hands I'll pray with you I'll just pray you're saying Lord I realize there's been a disconnection but today I want to reconnect with you yeah that just lift your hands father I lift up your son your daughter whose hands are lifted I ask because their hands are lifted right by that corner behind the, because their hands are lifted as from this day may your mercy locate them that by your grace and by mercy there should be realignment with your plan and purpose for their lives in the name of Jesus I ask oh Lord wherever there's been a compromise may your mercy prevail in the name of Jesus thank you father blessed be thy name in Jesus glorious name we pray and I pray for all your sons and daughters that's from this moment onwards they shall make global impact people of value people of victory they shall be people of vision they shall be people of virtues wherever they stand your name shall be glorified through them so shall it be in the name of Jesus we decree and let your amen be a believers amen but let me just chip this in as I'm going now I believe that for someone before the end of this month God's favor shall envelope you God's glory shall shine upon you destiny helper shall arrive at your doorstep delayed blessings shall come by fire and when people see you dancing and rejoicing when they see you jumping for joy they will ask who did it now chill 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 you see when they see you dancing and rejoicing they will ask who did it your answer jesus chill jesus and you continue oh my god and when god, jesus steps in he makes you a wonder our definition of a wonder is wow so when they ask who did it your answer jesus oh my god wow who did it god bless you